Red, white and blue tells the story of Rachel, a single mother struggling to make ends meet and forced to make a desperate journey to obtain an abortion. Starring Brittany Snow, the film follows Rachel making the trip from Arkansas where abortion is banned even in cases of rape or incest. She ends up traveling seven hours to get to the nearest place where an abortion isn't illegal. Hi, um, I need an abortion, like, yesterday. Do you have an appointment? Um, I tried calling, but I, can, I couldn't get through. I, I've come all the way from Arkansas. Yeah, you and everybody from that state, and all the other ones, too. Can we go? Directed by British writer Nazarin Chowdhury, the film revolves around a shocking and dramatic twist which changes her and her family's lives forever. It comes two years after the US Supreme Court effectively made abortion illegal for millions of women in America, overturning the landmark Roe v. Wade ruling. 21 states now ban or restrict abortion, with women's rights set to be a crucial battleground in the presidential election. Earlier, I sat down with Nazrin Chowdhury, and I started by asking her why she made this film. Well, you can hear I'm British for my accent, but I actually live in Los Angeles. In 2022, the Supreme Court made a decision that reversed Roe v. Wade, and that affected reproductive rights across the board. And so I want to tell a story about the real world repercussions arising from that decision. So very much a sort of campaigning film, really. Is that how you see it? Yes and no, in the sense of what storytellers do really well is to illustrate the world that we live in and the characters that inhabit it. And it's not political per se, but everything becomes political. Mm. So it's really demonstrating what legislation has done and how it affects the every person in America. And obviously affects some people more than others in terms of if you haven't got the means or you're a person of colour, you are going to be disproportionately affected, potentially. That's very true. Uh, and, you know, we tell our story in Arkansas and it is a very uh, regressive state in terms of abortion and healthcare, especially in the aftermath of the decision. And our character in our story actually has to go away she has to drive across two states to get the urgent and uh, uh, necessary healthcare that she needs. Mm. And when you already have limited means, how do you do that? And now there's a, a shocking twist in, in the film. Was it your intention to shock? Was it your intention to sort of challenge prejudices? Definitely to challenge preconceptions. You know, there's so many reasons why someone might need or want an abortion that I think we need to consider without judgment. And to get to where the story is going to, it's really challenging our preconceptions as an audience and to set about those very valid reasons. And if you didn't care about it until that point, well, do you care about it now? It's fascinating that men do feature in the film, but they're not, they don't speak. Um, I mean, is it, was that a sort of deliberate thing that you know, men shouldn't really have a voice and a, a sort of controlling voice over women's own bodily autonomy. Yeah, it was a very deliberate choice. It was very intentional to really give the platform over and the voice of the film to those whose reproductive rights have been affected. And we have wonderful male allies who understood that. It's interesting, isn't it, that it looks like we're going to have two elderly men um, standing off against each other in the presidential campaign. How central do you think abortion rights will be in that campaign? And how toxic is this issue for the Republicans? I don't know if there's as much appetite for it as the Republicans think. Um, you know, certainly we didn't make this film to be political. I'm not trying to be political about it. It doesn't matter if we are a Republican or a Democrat. This is a real human rights issue. The US is a bit of an outlier on abortion. I mean, the trend worldwide is towards greater liberalization. And I wonder, given that you're British, but now living in the US, whether you think that the UK will maintain abortion rights or if there is a, a, a fear in your mind that they will get chiseled away? I think whenever we're talking about bodily autonomy, wherever you are in the world, there seems to be an attempt to chisel away at that. I do feel like living as someone who's British in America and seeing what has happened in the greatest democracy that exists in the world, or at least that's the sentiment that everyone wants to abide by in America, if that can happen there, 
then it can happen anywhere. And the UK is certainly not immune to that. Several films about abortion rights have made the Oscar shortlist. Um, are you, were you pleasantly surprised to be nominated? Do you, I mean, does it, does it speak to the salience of this issue? I think it does. I do hope it continues to have traction. And having been nominated now, that it means more people are going to watch this film, more people are going to have the conversation that we need and, and go towards that change that we're talking about. Nasrin Chowdhury, thanks very much. Thank you so much.